Have you ever used a public toilet? How would you describe your experience? Well, you don't have to respond to that. Many of us will not have a very pleasant experience to share as no one feels good to use an unhygienic toilet. While the government is doing a great job building toilets across the country for the convenience of its people, but like every commodity, asset, infrastructure needs certain amount of care and maintenance, so do public and community toilets. There are three ways in which operation and maintenance of a public toilet and a community toilet can be looked at. One, if a local body builds itself which would mean it would design and construct and then would operate also by themselves, by their own staff. That is, you design, build and also operate by the local government itself. The second method in which operations and maintenance of public toilet and community toilet can happen is when, when local body constructs the structure and request private sector to maintain it and operate it of course. So this is a difference. ULB would construct and design and private operator would operate and maintain. Let us take a look at a few case studies to understand this model better. Samagra is for-profit social enterprise that partners with municipal agencies and refurbishes and redesigns community toilets provided by the Pune Municipal Corporation and also operates and maintains them. Samagra toilets are run on a pay and use basis by women entrepreneurs, also called as Bachat Sakis, belonging to the same community. They are active in engaging with the users in the community and bundle different value-added services such as mobile and television top-ups, bill payments and other financial services transforming the community toilets into community centers. The model relies highly on the use of modern technology thereby reducing the cost of operation and maintenance which makes it a sustainable sanitation model. In order to encourage people to use toilets, Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation has made 84 public toilets in the city that are free for use for slum dwellers while chargeable for floating population. These are outsourced to private agencies who are paid a fixed monthly remuneration by the Municipal Corporation. How does then the business model sustain? We pay 25,000 per month to these toilets as user charges on behalf of the citizens. So making toilets available at any cost is more important than thinking of the money in it. The third method is when ULB negotiates or outsources work to a private sector. It contracts out work to a private sector to build, operate and maintain the public toilet and community toilet. This is a third method in which operations and maintenance could be looked at. The ULB signs a contract with the private agency under which the agency is obliged to operate and maintain the unit for five years, after which it is supposed to hand it back to the ULB. Some contracts can also be for a period of one year, as in the case of Mahindra and Mahindra, that built public toilets in South Delhi under the CSR initiative and is bound to maintain it for one year and then hand it back to the South Delhi Municipal Corporation. Ideally, local governments should have performance-based contracts, which would mean instead of measuring output or inputs, you're measuring outcomes, which would mean you're, if you have many agencies, you would look at which agency has performed the best and based on the criteria, you would evaluate their work. So it's per whether you're performing to the benchmark set or the standard set. So performance-based contracting is the best method to see that your work is delivered based on outcomes and not input or outputs. Performance-based contract would allow ULBs to either penalize the private contractor or appreciate their work through giving incentives or uh, 
giving additional benefits to the private sector. So it works both ways. You, if you have done better work, then you are incentivized. If you have not done good work based on your benchmarks, you are penalized. Mostly, irrespective of the operation and maintenance model of public and community toilets, the ULB provides land, one-time electricity connection, water supply connection and storage connection, if available, and any other concessions to make the public and community toilets operational. Also, it is very essential for all agencies to follow a standard operating procedure or a SOP for public and community toilets. So, what do you mean by SOP? Standard operating procedures are important for an urban local body to prepare. This is important because your sanitation workers should understand what procedures should to follow for what kind of an outcome. So, there are two things. You need SOP and you also need bench benchmarks. So SOP and benchmark would go hand in hand. Now what are the methods or what are the steps of SOP? One, how do you clean? The ways and procedure of cleaning would be written down in an SOP. The second is, what are your equipments? What, what do you have? Whether you will need brooms, whether you need need a certain kind of liquids and the third thing which is very important is the frequency of cleaning now there would be certain pockets or there would be certain um, areas where maybe frequency because of the footfall would be higher compared to some other places where the footfall is not uh, so much so that would be also mentioned in the SOP it could be a table saying if the footfall is ABC or so many numbers then do XYZ so those kind of uh, matrix could be provided in the SOP now for better results one needs to put the SOP in the public domain users should also know what standards the the facility is to be to be met with so there should be a feedback mechanism where users provide feedback whether this facility is adhering to the standards which would mean adhering to the benchmark set by the local body and hence the information on how to meet the success should be known to the public. A few other things that should be taken into consideration are the toilet should be kept operational 24 hours wherever required such as near railway stations where there is a floating population all throughout the day and night. Care should be taken that user charges should be decided on the ability of the user to pay and should be mentioned on the front gate itself. Also, in order for women to feel safe, women caretakers should be appointed to look after the women toilets. Apart from levying user fees, ULB can provide billboard advertisement space outside the public toilets to generate funds for operation and maintenance of public toilets. If the urban local body decides to outsource the operations and maintenance, then it becomes extremely important for an urban local body to conduct proper monitoring. If you don't monitor, the contracts will go haywire and obviously you will not get the desired results. So for monitoring, one has to look at and provide formats for on, how, on what scale you are monitoring the, um, the agency. So formats become important, the reporting procedures become very important and all the staff at various levels in the ULB should be on the same page. They should understand what's going on and they should be informed of the, of the scale in which monitoring needs to be done. So all levels of the uh, monitoring staff within the local body should know and the same thing should be communicated to the private agency for better results. Another way to efficiently monitor the operation and maintenance activities is by empowering the public to voice their opinions. We have the ONM agencies that have been monitoring Her toilet complex ke bahar humne jo concerned executive engineer hai uska mobile number likhwa diya likh diya ki agar ye saaf nahi hai 
तो इस मोबाइल नंबर पे एग्जीक्यूटिव इंजीनियर को आप फोन करें उसकी कॉन्स्टेंट सेंट्रलाइज टीम मॉनिटरिंग के लिए बनाई गई है कई जगह जो एजेंसी ठीक से काम नहीं कर रही उनके कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कैंसिल भी किए गए हैं We can achieve the required cleanliness standard for toilets only if proper monitoring and follow up of operation and maintenance activities is done. We are investing huge resources in building toilets. A new swanky sparkling clean toilet block built will soon become dilapidated if not operated and maintained well. To truly make India open defecation free, cities should clearly chart out their operation and maintenance plans after all we don't want to build toilets that no one wants to use it is important to plan technically and financially for operations and maintenance of ptcts at the outset all contracts for onm of ptcts should be performance based where the payments are linked to deliverables ulbs should adopt the standard operating procedures and ensure onm according to these ulbs should ensure a dedicated team for monitoring of ptcts and have a system for capturing citizens feedback